Welcome to today's lecture, Introduction to Manufacturing. Uh, our topic today is hydraulics. In the last couple lectures, we've talked about uh, the, the, the general terms of manufacturing. We've talked about quality. But now we're kind of getting a little more of the more um, sophisticated part of manufacturing, hydraulics. Uh, hydraulics is a, a major part of uh, any type of modern day applications when it comes to uh, manufacturing, whether it's uh, on the, uh, the uh, maintenance side of it, which actually runs the hydraulic systems, or actually on the production side of it, where you're using hydraulics to, uh, to do work for you. So the, the, the main thing that we use hydraulics for, uh, in the next lesson you'll learn a little bit about pneumatics, we use each of these to help us perform work. Uh, by utilizing hydraulics uh, or the actual uh, concepts of um, pneumatics, we can actually do work a little bit easier, a little bit without having to do so much physical labor. So that's a good part of it. So we're going to get right into it. So some of the terms for, uh, for hydraulics, some of the terminology, uh, every hydraulic system must have a pump. That is what actually creates the pressure of a device in a hydraulic system is the pump. Uh, pressure, talk about hy hydraulics, you want to know how much pressure or how much pounds per square inch or PSI such as 500 psi or even 5,000 psi, the, uh, that's how much pressure on every square inch. So if you have a, uh, a 12 by 12 inch uh, area, surface area, and you have hydraulic pusher, pressure pushing on that, one inch, uh, that's one inch per square inch, or if there's 144 pounds, that would be uh, you know, 144 pounds per square inch per, for every inch. So that's kind of the, 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 the psi concept. The amount of pressure in a hydraulic system determines how much work the system can perform. So if I have a 500 PSI system, everything that I have in that system must be rated for 500 pounds or greater. You wouldn't want to have a, uh, a certain tube that you're using to man a, uh, a certain type of cylinder or an, or an air pump or a hydraulic pump and it's rated at 50 PSI when the system is actually a 500 PSI system. You're creating a very unsafe uh, condition. Fluorite. Fluorite is identified by GPMs or gallons per minute, such as five gallons per minute or even 40 gallons per minute. Those are just examples. The fluorite of a hydraulic system determines how fast a system can perform work. So if you're utilizing a um, certain type of an actuator, which say, say in the case of a cylinder, then uh, if, you can, if you can transfer the fluid very quickly, which means that you're doing it in 40 gallons per minute or 500, you know, five, five, uh, 50 gallons per minute, then you're pushing a lot of fluid and therefore you can move that cylinder really fast. And uh, you can use different types of uh, flow control valves to, 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 to adjust that. Same as you can use pressure control valves to adjust your pressure to make sure that you're not over pressurizing the system. Sometimes they, uh, they call it a, a power unit. Uh, it's the assembly of hydraulic equipment usually including a hydraulic pump, a reservoir that holds the hydraulic fluid, uh, filters, strainers, pressure gauging regulation uh, valves that, that, that keeps the pressure at certain times, and even at times directional control valves. Uh, directional control valves are used to uh, push certain hydraulic fluid in certain directions uh, that are under, under pressure to uh, actually do work. Usually away from the power unit, there, that you may have an, what they call is an accumulator. A unit accumulator is a pressure assist device in a hydraulic pump. It, it assists the hydraulic pump. It actually stores pressure usually at a remote location away from the pump, it can act as a backup or an alternative source for pressure. There's two different types. You have the bladder type, which uses internal bladder in inflated with high pressure gas, and it applies pressure to the hydraulic fluid, or just a simple piston type, which uses a piston to separate high pressure gas from the hydraulic fluid. Either type uh, are used in manufacturing, uh, pretty much the, across the board. Uh, so an accumulator, uh, can, you can store pressure if the pump that creates the pressure goes down, accumulated. Sometimes they're stored at a actual work site itself. Hydraulics, we're continuing on in terminology, uh, the actual hydraulic fluid is a non-compressible fluid. A non-compressible fluid does not increase or decrease its volume under pressure. So as pressure starts pushing on this volume, uh, what it does, it just it doesn't, it doesn't change in its uh, 
uh, actual size, but it actually creates pressure. And it, all, all liquids, including hydraulic fluid, are non-compressible. Sometimes in, in hydraulic systems, you end up receiving what they call cavitation. It's usually after somebody has actually worked on a piece of equipment, they've allowed air to get in the system, the air is either creating a, a, a bubble lock or creating some, something to happen. Typically, you'll hear a bunch of banging and some noises, uh, usually in a, 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 like in a, 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 a type of tube or maybe in a direction control valve. And the system should be cut down, shut down immediately so that you can actually try to bleed the air out. You may not do it as a, uh, as a, 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 a technician that's actually doing production, but you may do it if you're doing on the maintenance side. If you're on the maintenance side of, of, of productivity or on the maintenance side of, of, of uh, manufacturing, you'll be, you could be the one doing that. Back to directional control valves. Directional control valves are used to uh, control the flow or the direction of the hydraulic fluid. So sometimes we want it to go to the right, sometimes we want it to go to the left, sometimes we want it to go straight down the middle. Whatever you tell that directional control valve to do is what it's going to do. Uh, the term port. We hear that, we're going to hear that term often when we start talking about hydraulics and pneumatics. A port is a connection point for which hard, to, hard pipe or tubing connects the different types of valves. So if we have a directional control valve, on the, each side of the direction control valve, you'll have certain ports. So if you have a direction control valve that can send hydraulic fluid in three different directions, you're going to have uh, probably at least four different ports, one in and three locations to go out uh, to actually connect your hard piping or your tubing to to go out. Flow control valve, I mentioned that earlier. Flow control valve is used to control the speed of a device. Typically, as you'll learn later, you want to try to uh, control that by the using of the fluid outside of the device, not, not, you know, it's after the fact, not before the fact. But what you can do is the flow control valve can be adjusted to uh, actually help control the device. A cylinder. A cylinder is an actuator used to perform work in a straight line or in a linear format, up or down, left or right. Uh, if you have an elevator where you're, uh, where you're currently at, chances are that elevator, uh, especially if it's only three floors or less, is running off of a cylinder. That elevator expands uh, straight up in a straight line or comes down in a straight line in a, in a format depending on the, uh, the, the size or the length. A motor. A motor is an actuator device used to perform work in a rotating motion. What this is, it's nothing different than your electric motor, but instead of having electric, you know, charging up the, the, the motor with electricity, you're running fluid through it and the veins are being caught by the hydraulic fluid which allow that device and, and later to the shaft the shaft will start to spin and, and hopefully you have um, you know, a, a pulley or something attached to that shaft that's actually doing the work. Filter, we talked about filters earlier. Filter is used to remove contamination from the hydraulic fluid. A strainer, a strainer is a metal screen used to filter large particles from the hydraulic fluid. Typically a strainer is right before where you're pouring hydraulic fluid into the reservoir, there should be a strainer. Something, nothing different than like the strainer you use at home for your coffee or for your noodles. When you cook your noodles, you strain the water out, your noodles stay in the strainer, you dump it out. Uh, a filter is a little bit more. They're usually built in. They catch anything that may have got inside uh, the actual hydraulic fluid that are smaller than what the strainer would catch. The term piping, these are the, you have different types. You have a hard pipe. These are all things that are connected to different ports. Uh, hard piping to connect the, the equipment in a hydraulic system to transfer or or of the pressurized or non-pressurized hydraulic fluid, you may have a hose or tubing. That's, those are actually flexible types of pipes or flexible tubings that can be used uh, to, to make your connections. You want, but you want to make sure your piping and your hosing are all sufficient for the, the, the size of the hydraulic system that you have. So in, in general conversation, you're talking to someone, they ask you, hey, what size is your hydraulic system? Well, you're not going to tell them, oh, it's a, you know, it's 50 feet, it's 100 feet. No, they're going to want to know what's the PSI, what's, the, what's your pressurized up to. Is it, a, is it a 50 PSI system or is it a, you know, something much greater than that? All right, when you pressurize liquid, you, what, what do you do? You, you, you're, you're compressing the, the fluid. As you're compressing it, you usually create heat. And uh, so sometimes you have to have heat exchangers. Sometimes you're, you're pushing the fluid through a, a system and it's creating friction. That friction is going to create heat. So you've got to have heat exchangers. Heat exchangers are all, often needed in customized or very high pressure hydraulic power units. The heat exchanger cools the hydraulic fluid using a, 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 usually a cooling fan. 
Those fans can be electric. They may be hydraulic. They may be, you know, a pneumatic. So depending on what type they are. Keeping the heat exchanger clean is important from preventing overheating. Man, you really want to keep that heat exchanger clean because if it's not working, it's kind of like a radio in your car. If you, your radio in your car is not kept clean, it gets full of debris, well, it's not going to cool your engine down, and therefore you're going to po possibly have engine failure. So you want to clean that out. We talked about uh, earlier flow and, and controlling your flow with your actuator. If I know that I want my hydraulic cylinder to move at a certain speed, I'm going to either I'm going to have uh, flow control valves on the uh, inside of that of that of that actuator and on the outside of that actuator, and I want to make sure that I can really try the best way to, to to do that for precise controlling of my valves or of my actuators is on the metered outside of it. So. Uh, utilize your flow control valve on the outside, adjust it, and that'll actually keep the uh, more precise of your actuators. Flusher, uh, pressure regulator valve is an adjustable pressure valve used to control the pressure of a hydraulic system. These are normally closer to your pumps. They're actually going to utilize that to control the pressure. Your pump may be able to pressure up more, but only wants so much to be used in my system. I can utilize it there. And then if it does get over that amount, I have a pressure relief valve that actually uh, discharges, releases that pressure before it's passed on through the system. And then, of course, your pump may have a pressure switch on it to help keep you within, within your certain parameters. Uh, a pressure uh, a switch, say it's set at, at 75 PSI. As the pressure uh, gets to 75 PSI, it shuts off. And as the pressure on the system reduces below 75 PSI, it comes back on. Always trying to keep that, that certain uh, maintenance of, um, of, uh, uh, of pressure in the system. Pressure gauge, uh, whether if it's uh, analog with a dial or if it's a digital type, they're, two, they're, they're different types and uh, they help you read when throughout the different, type, uh, different areas of the hydraulic system what is, the, uh, what is the, uh, the pressure actually reading. Then reservoir, we talked about reservoir before, typically located near the uh, hydraulic pump. Uh, a tube fitting is used in a hydraulic system to make tube connections. That's tube to tube, not a tube to a, to a, uh, a valve or a tube to an actuator. It's tube to tube, tube fitting. Uh, the term ISO, you're going to hear a lot of ISO. Uh, ISO is the International Organization for Standardization. Uh, if you had a hydraulic uh, new, uh, a schematic right there in front of you, chances are all the schematic drawings on that are, are um, determined by, the, uh, by ISO. Uh, for, for standardization. So that tells me that if I have a set of plans in front of me for a hydraulic system, no matter if I'm here uh, where I'm at or where you're at, everybody has the same standardization, understands what that plans read uh, based on, on their uh, recommendations. Uh, hydraulic safety, I mentioned a couple times. You know, we're talking about PSI, we're talking about uh, increased in temperature. So we're, we're definitely concerned with that. So make sure in your hydraulic system that, that it's safe. All hoses, pipes, and fittings of a hydraulic system must have a pressure rating higher than the maximum pressure of the system. Hoses have an identification markings on them. You'll see the WP, you usually see WP uh, 45 PSI. That tells you that the working pressure of this type of hose is 45 PSI. You want to make sure that you're not overloading that. When inspecting for leaks, you want to use your hands. The hydraulic fluid is, one, it's usually some sort of a... Uh, uh, you know, uh, type of a, uh, an oil or type of a, of a fluid that you don't want on your hands, one. But two, it's going to be either hot or sometimes it's going to be under great pressure. So you don't want to put your hand there and have all this uh, hot oil spray in your hand or a pressurized type of fluid spray on you. Pinholes are, are not often visible and can cause serious injuries. Place, use a piece of wood or cardboard. Place it back there and start looking for it. I always check that hydraulic pressure reads to zero before disconnecting any part. <clears throat> like I said, 45 PSI is a lot of pressure to be under. 5 PSI is a lot of pressure for uh, a human or a worker to be working around. You want to make sure that it's zero before working on it. There are OSHA compliant pressure bleeding devices. If you have a hydraulic system or a round one, look for those. Those are going to be located. They're going to be there. You should know where they're at if you're, if you're in charge of working on a system and knowing how to do that. Even if you're working, you know, say it's your job to work on a system, you have a certain pneumatic, uh, or I'm sorry, hydraulic um, actuator that you're working on, putting it together a piece in the, in the uh, assembly line, you should know where that, uh, that, that pressure bleeding device is at. 
I always use a correct wrench and, 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 and tools. You don't, you don't use the tools uh, as a hammer. You know, make sure you have the, set, the right size wrench. Don't use pipe wrenches. Definitely don't use pliers. Use the right tool for the right job. It always keeps you safe. Uh, system components and piping may be hot. Remember, we're talking about compressing a fluid. Creates heat. Look for identification such as uh, hoses with, with uh, crack, visible cracks, cuts, or abrasions on the exterior or on the, even on the sides. Uh, we like to, to say everything clean as you go, and if everything stays clean, you'll be able to see when something happens. Hydraulic fluid usually creates a little bit of a mess. So if uh, your work area is usually clean, you, you, the, the hoses and stuff that you're working around are normally cleaned uh, for, for inspection, then chances are you'll be able to see when things happen. So hydraulic safety is paramount. Uh, that's everything for today, uh, today's lecture. Uh, everything you need there is for your exam, uh, your quiz.